Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we have our first Chinese folktale of the week. This story features a young girl who is stolen away, obviously, a brave brother, and a mischievous spirit. This is The Maiden Who Was Stolen Away. In the western portion of the old capital city of Luoyang, there was a ruined cloister, in which stood an enormous pagoda, several hundred stories high. Three or four people could still find room to stand on its very top. Not far from it, there lived a beautiful maiden, and one very hot summer's day she was sitting in the courtyard of her home trying to keep cool. As she sat there, a sudden cyclone came up and carried her off. When she opened her eyes, there she was, on top of the pagoda, and beside her stood a young man in the dress of a student. He was very polite and affable, and said to her, It seems as though heaven had meant to bring us together, and if you promise to marry me, we will be very happy. But to this, the maiden would not agree. So the student said that until she changed her mind, she would have to remain on the pagoda top. Then he produced bread and wine for her to satisfy her hunger and thirst, and disappeared. Thereafter, he appeared each day and asked whether she had changed her mind, and each day she told him she had not. When he went away, he always carefully closed the openings in the pagoda top with stones, and he had also removed some of the steps of the stairs, so that she could not climb down. And when he came to the pagoda top, he always brought her food and drink, and he also presented her with rouge and powder, dresses and mandarin coats and all sorts of jewelry. He told her he had bought them in the marketplace. And he also hung up a great carbuncle stone so that the pagoda top was bright by night as well as by day. The maiden had all that heart could wish, and yet she was not happy. But one day, when he went away, he forgot to lock the window. The maiden spied on him without his knowing it, and saw that from a youth he turned himself into an ogre, with hair as red as madder, and a face as black as coal. His eyeballs bulged out of their sockets, and his mouth looked like a dish full of blood. Crooked white fangs thrust themselves from his lips, and two wings grew from his shoulders. Spreading them, he flew down to earth and at once turned into a man again. The maiden was seized with terror and burst into tears. Looking down from her pagoda, she saw a wanderer passing below. She called out, but the pagoda was so high that her voice did not carry down to him. She beckoned with her hand, but the wanderer did not look up. Then she could think of nothing else to do but to throw down the old clothes she had formerly worn. They fluttered through the air to the ground. The wanderer picked up the clothes. Then he looked up at the pagoda, and quite up at the very top, he saw a tiny figure which looked like that of a girl, yet he could not make out her features. For a long time he wondered who it might be, but in vain. Then he saw a light. My neighbor's daughter, he said to himself. She was carried away by a magic storm. Is it possible that she may be up there? So he took the clothes with him and showed them to the maiden's parents, and when they saw them they burst into tears. But the maiden had a brother who was stronger and braver than anyone for miles around. When the tale had been told him, he took a heavy axe and went to the pagoda. There he hid himself in the tall grass and waited for what would happen. When the sun was just going down, along came a youth trampling the hill. Suddenly he turned into an ogre, spread his wings, and was about to fly but the brother flung his axe at him and struck him on the arm. He began to roar loudly, then fled to the western hills. 
But when the brothers saw that it was impossible to climb the pagoda, he went and enlisted the aid of several neighbors. With them, he returned the following morning and they climbed up into the pagoda. Most of the steps of the stairway were in good condition for the ogre had only destroyed those at the top. But they were able to get up with a ladder, and then the brother fetched down his sister and brought her safely home again. And that was the end of the enchantment. And that is the Chinese book tale from the Chinese fairy book of the maiden who was stolen away. And here we have a beautiful young maiden, as they almost inevitably all are, being stolen away by an ogre, by a spirit, and held at the top of an abandoned pagoda until, at last, she's rescued, not by her love, but by her brother. I like that story. I like that ending. This is Dan Scholes for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget that you can also help support the podcast by heading over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can get early access to every story told. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>